Hello everyone, welcome to Kia Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2008 Chevy Express with a 6.0 liter. The complaint on this van is that the check engine light is on and the temperature gauge momentarily shoots all the way up to the red mark, okay? It shows that the bus is overheating while the engine is not really hot. So something is going on and the driver also reported that when the temperature gauge went to the extremely hot mark the red mark the bus was hard to start so she couldn't get it to start she left it there and called me and i got there i started it right up so it looks like this issue is intermittent i don't know what it is so we're gonna go inside the van and confirm the complaint i also want to point out that when i got there she said the check engine light was on but when i got there the check engine light wasn't on so i drove it back to the shop and now here we are so let's go inside the car and confirm the complaint first. Hopefully we can confirm it. If we can't, we're gonna connect the scan tool to the car to see what kind of trouble codes we have in memory. So let's go inside the van. All right, I am inside the van, so we're gonna confirm the complaint. So she said that this light was on, but when I started, the check engine light goes off, okay? So we're gonna let it idle so it can reach operating temperature. But before we do that, let's connect the scan tool to the van to see what kind of trouble codes we have in memory. So I'll connect the scan tool and bring you guys back up. All right, so right here, guys, we have two trouble codes in the engine control unit. We have P0054, O2 sensor hero resistance, bank one sensor two, test failed since DTC cleared. And then the second one is P0128, engine coolant temperature sensor, ECT, below thermostat regulating temperature. Test failed since DTC cleared. So, these are the trouble codes we have and I'm going to focus on this second trouble code, P0128. You might wonder why am I just focusing on this trouble code? Well, based on the symptom that the driver told me, I'm gonna focus on this because this is what caused the temperature gauge to go all the way to the hot mark and the driver also said when the temperature gauge, basically this gauge right here, when it went all the way to the hot mark, there was a message here on the dash that said engine hot. So she turned it off and tried to start it back up. The temperature gauge was stuck right here and the van didn't start, okay? The van was just cranking. It was, at that point it became a crank, no start condition, all right? So I got there and I turned the key, I cycled the key a couple of times and I started it, it started. She told me she couldn't get it to start but I started it and the check engine light wasn't on, I was able to drive it to the shop. So now let's diagnose it and see why the temperature gauge went up because I believe it's an intermittent issue so I wasn't able to duplicate it. But luckily we have a trouble code in memory that's gonna give us some direction, okay? So now what I wanna do next is let's back out of here and see if we have any freeze frame data. So let's look at some freeze frame data so we can see what the computer was looking at when, when this trouble code set. All right, so freeze frame slash failure records. So here the computer takes a picture of all the data pins when this trouble code is set, okay? So we're gonna look at the freeze frame data of this P0128 code, which we are tackling on this video. So let's click on this icon here. So all these data pids that you see, these are the data pids that the computer received when this trouble code set, okay? So I am interested in engine speed. So the RPM, 1887 and engine temperature, so right here, 55 degree Fahrenheit. And then let's look at, uh, so it looks like this was above idle. And let's see if we can find some vehicle speed here. So right here, vehicle speed, 32 miles per hour. Let's see if we can find some run time here. So right over here, our run time is, I guess, six minutes and 27 seconds. So basically what happens here is the engine computer looks at the engine speed, the vehicle speed, 
and the engine temperature to basically gauge uh, the air fuel mixture so that the vehicle doesn't pollute the air okay so it adjusts the air fuel uh, ratio based on the engine temperature so that to reduce uh, emissions let's say after 10 minutes of the engine running if the engine coolant temperature sensor is still reporting a temperature uh, let's say below 60 degree Fahrenheit or around 55 degree Fahrenheit with that time the computer would be like no around this time you would have been over 100 degree Fahrenheit okay and then it flags this code okay it means something is wrong it's because maybe the thermostat is not doing its job because the thermostat could be stuck open you could have a fan that's stuck on or that's you know on all the time you could have a defective sensor a engine coolant temperature sensor that's sending a skewed signal to the engine computer or you could have a wiring issue okay so the basically the computer is, say, is saying well in 10 minutes your I mean I'm just giving an example because here is six minutes okay let's use six as an example the computer knows let's say in the six minutes of runtime the temperature would be let's say a hundred and de 100 degree Fahrenheit okay if the temperature is below that number the computer would say oh something is wrong because with this time the temperature would have been a hundred degree Fahrenheit and then it flags the code okay so I hope that makes sense. So let's back out of here and look at some live data. So I'm just interested. So let's customize this list. I'm just interested. Let's deselect all. I'm just interested in the engine coolant temperature sensor data PID. So let's list this. Let's graph it. So actually we could also grab the intake at temperature sensor data pit here just to compare because the engine is fairly cold so the engine coolant temperature sensor and the intake air temperature sensor should have the same values right now okay so as you can see our intake air temperature is reporting 69 degree Fahrenheit over here and then our engine coolant temperature sensor is reporting 66 degree Fahrenheit. So let's graph both of them. And now I'm going to start the car. We will watch how fast this coolant temperature sensor uh, data PID will increase. As the engine gets hot, the temperature will increase. And we're going to watch until the thermostat opens, okay? Because the temperature is going to be increasing gradually. What we don't want to see is a drop. Okay, you don't want to see a drop after most thermostats open between 190 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we will see a drop here between 190 to 200 or 205 degrees Fahrenheit. If we see a drop before that, that can be an indication of a defective thermostat or a, a defective sensor itself but most likely a thermostat. So let's start it and see what we're gonna find. So the engine is running. I'm gonna give it gas to kind of have the engine reach operating temperature a little faster. So let's just watch the temperature. there the temperature is increasing I don't like what I see guys did you guys just see this we went all the way up to around 82 and then we dropped and now we're going up again this is a classic symptom of a defective thermostat. So watch, we are reading around 80 degree Fahrenheit right now. And then it's gonna drop again, see? So we should see a steady increase and then a drop when the thermostat opens. Yeah. 
So all this drop means the thermostat is opening, you know, it's probably sticking. And we can't have a thermostat that opens at 50, 50 degree Fahrenheit or 75 degree Fahrenheit because the engine is not gonna reach operating temperature. Because the colder your engine runs, the more emissions it's gonna put out, okay? Because the, the fuel that's being injected inside the cylinder, it's not gonna get burnt properly because, because the engine is not getting hot enough. All right, so I'm gonna add some run time here on the screen. Uh, let's add the run time data feed here. So right here, the engine has been running for about four minutes and our temperature is still below 100. And did you see how it just shot up? So it went pretty much from 95 to 100 and to 110 and then it just shut down so it went from it went up and then down and then look at this this is abnormal guys that's why the trouble code has been set and this is intermittent you know it's not happening all the time sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't so that's why the check engine light is not on and that's why when it was happening at the time the driver couldn't start the van because it became a crank no stud. I believe that's when it got stuck on the hot position. Okay, so we have a thermostat problem. And this is how you check for a defective thermostat. The other thing I can check is I can check the wiring. I don't think the wiring is the issue. I can go under the hood and reach up to the sensor and disconnect it. So once I reach the sensor and disconnect it, our coolant temperature sensor data pad should read extremely cold because as I disconnect it, it's gonna be an open circuit, okay? Once the computer sees that high voltage, which is usually five volts, once the computer sees that, it's gonna interpret that signal as very cold temperature, okay? Man, see, this engine has been running for about six minutes now and our temperature is just around 107 degree Fahrenheit, like six minutes. I can assure you that we have a defective thermostat. I mean, this thermostat is stuck open. We don't have a sensor issue because if we had a sensor issue, usually a sensor issue kind of does a lot of ups and downs and sometimes it's gonna get stuck on like one value or just, you know, it's just gonna give you one specific temperature, you know. It's definitely getting hot, you know, the, temp the sensor is reporting whatever it's seeing right now. But the thermostat is not regulating uh, the temperature like it's supposed to. So right there, seven minutes, and we're still reading 114 degree Fahrenheit, okay? So right there, and once we get the thermostat replaced, you'll see how the temperature is gonna steadily increase because we should see a steady increase here until we reach around 190 to 200 degree Fahrenheit and then it's gonna drop when the thermostat opens, okay? So this right here is a classic symptom of a defective thermostat. I mean, eight minutes of run time and we're still around 116 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so this engine is not reaching operating temperature on time or it's not even reaching it right now. So, defective thermostat, stuck open thermostat. Let's go under the hood. I'm gonna disconnect the temperature sensor just to see if our wiring is good. I don't think we have a wiring issue here. Our issue is the thermostat. So let's go under the hood. We are under the hood and we're gonna find where the engine coolant temperature sensor lives so we can disconnect it. So right here guys, on the scanner, we are seeing 122 degree Fahrenheit. So once it's disconnected, our temperature should drop to extremely cold. Because that's gonna be an open signal. I mean, the computer is gonna be looking at the whole voltage on the wire, which will translate to an open circuit. 
So the sensor is right there. Let me zoom you guys in so you can see. There is a sensor. So I'm going to unplug it. So right there, I did unplug the sensor and let's look at the scanner now. Right there. So we were reading 122, now we went down to extremely cold. So minus 40 degree Fahrenheit, okay? So this tells us that our wiring is good and I believe our sensor is good. So the issue is the thermostat. And the thermostat on this vehicle lives around here. Just right here, but underneath this surge tank. So right there. So on the lower radiator hose, that's where the thermostat is, okay? So I'm gonna get this off. I'll get all this stuff off. Basically what you need to do is you can do it from the top or you can also go from underneath, okay? It's a little bit easier if you just do it from the top. I'll get this out of the way. I'll move these lines and these wires out of the way. I'm, I'm gonna have to disconnect the radiator hose and the other hoses under the surge tank. And once I get everything out of the way, I'll bring you guys back up so I can show you the location of the thermostat. And then we're gonna remove it so we can install another one. Once we install the other thermostat, I'll bring you guys back up so we can see the difference with the new thermostat, how our temperature is gonna increase nicely. So I will get this out of the way and bring you guys back up. All right guys, so I took the surge tank out and the thermostat lives right over here, okay? So we disconnected the lower radiator hose so we can remove the thermostat. So we're gonna remove this two 10 millimeter bolt. There's one over here and there's another one on the other side of it. You guys won't be, won't be able to see it. So right over there. So once we take that out, I'll bring you guys back up so I can show you the thermostat. And we're also gonna drain the radiator. Look at all this dirt. So we'll drain the radiator and put new coolant in it. We'll flush the cooling system. So we'll remove that and bring you guys back up. But as we were removing the thermostat, this bolt over here broke. Let me zoom in so you guys can see. The other 10 millimeter bolt on the thermostat housing, that bolt over there broke. So we're gonna have to remove the water pump and try to fish that bolt out or we can just replace the whole water pump. I mean, since we've gotten this far, we might as well replace the water pump. So, so basically we did this job just to replace the thermostat. And the thermostat lives over here and this bolt broke, so it made us remove the whole water pump. No, it's broke too, right? Yeah, oh my gosh, see? Not good. So just tap this, yeah, just, there you go, yeah, there you go. Oh, okay, cool. I got it. Okay, I he got it. it. All right, so here's a thermostat. I don't know if you can see, but. Not in good condition. No. Or junk. I mean, I can't really tell. I think it's stuck open. Anyways, well, we're gonna replace it. So these two bolt broke and uh, we can, we have the best welder in the world around here. So we'll see if Steve can get this out. I'm sure he will. You know what, maybe this. All right guys, so I got the thermostat on this elbow. So now I'm gonna install it on the water pump. So I'll put everything back together and then we will start the van. We're gonna go back inside the van, connect a scan tool to see if our temperature is gonna be showing a lot better this time with the new thermostat. So let's put everything back together. Okay guys, I'm back here in the van. So let's do some final checks before we wrap up this video. So I'm gonna start the van first. I already checked around the engine bay I checked underneath to see if there's any coolant leaks. So everything checked out okay guys. I checked that off camera, everything looks good. 
Well, the check engine light is on now. So now let's bring up our scan tool to see what kind of trouble codes we have in memory. So here guys, we have three trouble codes in memory, P0054, P0118, and P0128. Remember before we only had two trouble codes. And on this video, I'm only dealing with this code. This P0118 code came up because I disconnected the engine coolant temperature sensor while the key was on. So let's ignore this one. I'm going to erase the codes now and then we're going to look at some live data to look at our engine coolant temperature sensor data PID to see how the temperature of the engine is going to increase now. Since we replaced the thermostat, we should see a gradual increase in temperature. Okay, and then I already know about this code, so I'm going to erase the codes anyways. And then later on, I guess on another video, I will deal with this P0054 letter. Okay, so. Let's back out of here. And clear codes. So codes are clear. Let's go to data display. Engine data. So let's customize this list. So right there, the temperature is climbing. We are reading 185 degree Fahrenheit. hundred and eighty-six. Around 200 or around 199, the temperature should start decreasing. So the thermostat will open and then our temperature will start dropping. So right there, 195. The thermostat is not open yet. And remember before, at six minutes, the temperature was still around 55 degrees Fahrenheit. So right there, did you see that decrease? So now we just went down to 197. We went from 199 to 197. It's gonna keep decreasing a little bit more. So right there, 190, 195. I mean, you probably won't be able to see, but let me pause this a little bit. So our thermostat, so right here, the thermostat opened around this area, around frame 6,770. This little drop you see here, this is when our thermostat opened. So right there, we're still dropping. So the temperature looks fine. We no longer have dropouts or shoot up here on the graph. So everything is fine. This vehicle is fixed. So defective thermostat. This was gonna be a short video, but it ended being a long video because of the bolt that broke on the thermostat that broke off on the thermostat cover okay so we are reading around 210 degree Fahrenheit right now the temperature is gonna drop momentarily and as you can see our gauge is right there at 210 which so that's within the normal range okay so right there As you can see, the temperature is kind of, you know, as you can see these little drops here. So this is when the, the thermostat opened and it closed again. It opened, it closed. So, okay, this is the normal range. You know, in five minutes, the temperature should be around 200 or 190 degrees Fahrenheit. And remember before, I don't know if I said that already, and I'm sorry if I'm being repetitive, but before we had around six minutes of run time and our temperature was still showing 55 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? There's a huge difference 
this is a fix guys I'm gonna leave it right here um, I hope you like this video if you do give it a thumbs up if you don't give it a thumb down so if this is your first time here subscribe to my youtube channel K Diagnostics ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video thanks for watching guys see you next time